The 1950s was a time of experimentation for many car manufacturers, but while most brands were hard at work figuring out the intricacies and challenges surrounding turbos, Fiat took a different path, turbine engines, or as many call it, jet engines. And from this, the Fiat Turbina was born. The seeds of the Fiat Turbina were sown in an era defined by post-war optimism and technological advancements. Amidst the backdrop of a rapidly evolving automotive landscape, Fiat's engineering luminary Dante Giacosa dared to envision a future propelled by the raw power of jet engines. Drawing inspiration from the aerospace industry strides in turbine technology, Giacosa and his team embarked on a bold quest to harness the potential of gas turbine engines in the realm of automobiles. You see, back then, Fiat's aerospace divisions were busy building the ghost jet engine under the English manufacturer, the Habiland Engine Company. Now the project was actually top secret, and only a handful of engineers knew of it. And some of the expertise gained in this endeavor would be later used in the building of the Derbina. Now onto the actual engine. At the heart of the car lay the entirely new Topo 8001 gas turbine engine, a triumph of engineering, ingenuity and precision. Issuing the conventional wisdom of repurposing existing aircraft engines, Fiat's engineers embarked on a daring journey to create a bespoke power plant tailored to the demands of automotive performance. Through tireless research and meticulous design, the Topo 8001 emerged. Now this engine consisted of a two-stage centrifugal compressor, three can-type combustors, a axial turbine that drove the compressor and a single-stage power turbine that could be connected to the car's rear wheels. Now before I talk on power, remember this is 1951 and cars didn't make a whole lot of power back then. So how much did this Fiat make? Well, the Tepo 8001 made 295 horsepower at a breathtaking 22,000 RPM, making this car a goliath of its time. With the Tepo 8001 as its beating heart, the Fiat Turbina took shape as a symphony of engineering excellence. A tubeless steel chassis provided a sturdy foundation upon which Fiat's visionaries constructed a masterpiece of automotive innovation. Complemented by a sophisticated, fully independent suspension system and hydraulic drum brakes borrowed from Fiat's storied 8V sports car, the Fiat Turbina promised a driving experience unlike any other, a fusion of agility, stability and raw power. But they didn't stop there. In their pursuit of automotive perfection, Fiat spared no effort in crafting a body that epitomized aerodynamic elegance and efficiency. Luigi Rappi sculpted a masterpiece of automotive design, a streamlined two-seat Berlinetta adorned with striking rear fins and sweeping curves. The result was a marvel of aerodynamic engineering, boasting a drag coefficient of just 0.14, a record-setting figure that would stand for 30 years. Now with that engine, the lightweight body and the low drag coefficient, this Fiat could reach speeds of up to 230 km per hour, which is crazy. Remember, this is a car that was built in the 50s. This car was truly amazing. Anyways, let me stop drooling over the car and let's continue. Now in March 1954, the Fiat Turbina roared to life for the first time on the rooftop track of Fiat's iconic Lingotto plant for its final tasting. After this, it was time for its public debut at the Turin Motor Show and this show sent shockwaves through the automotive world, captivating audiences and cementing Fiat's reputation as a pioneer of automotive technology. Those subsequent tests would reveal challenges such as overheating and fuel consumption, and these challenges seemingly led to the ultimate demise of the car. You see, the Fiat Turbina never graced the production line, which is unfortunate as its impact on automotive history is undeniable. Today, the Turbina stands as a revered relic of a bygone era, a reminder of Fiat's audacious spirit and the boundless possibilities of automotive engineering. As enthusiasts and historians alike marvel at its jet-powered magnificence, in museums and exhibitions, the Fiat Turbina serves as an enduring testament to the power of innovation and the relentless pursuit of automotive excellence. But at the end of the video, please let me know what you think of this awesome classic. Do you think it was ever intended for anything more than just a concept? Um, or do you think this car was just built to show off 
like Fiat showing exactly how good the engineers are? Or do you think they actually wanted to build a race car out of this? Remember, there was actually quite a few teams and stuff building turbine race cars. There was a turbine car racing at Le Mans as well. It, this was a cool time in history. I mean, these days you don't really see turbine engines in anything. But back then, a lot of people tried building something from this technology. But yeah, at the end of the video, please let me know what you thought of the video and what you think of the car. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I. Thank you.